Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Architect. And from the bottom of my heart, Susan, thank you for shepherding this end. When I asked if Susan would shepherd this for me, along with John, John Lewis, she said yes, a mighty yes. And here we are. And there's our sapling right here. Thank you very much for doing that. We are in rarefied air today with two Mississippi senators, our own Attorney General, Eric Holder. I want to thank you, Eric, for as Attorney General, you have made your priorities, this nation's national security and the civil rights of all of its citizens. We are grateful to you and very proud of you, and thank you for bringing Sharon. I see some other of my friends out there, a great civil rights activist and broadcaster, Joe Madison and his beautiful bride, Sherry, and Lonnie Bunch, the director of the new museum, the newest museum on the mall. It's the Museum of African American History and Culture that will be opening soon. I wanted this tree for Emmett Till because his brutal murder is a symbol, a lasting and painful symbol of what could happen to you if you were black in the 20th century in this country at the hands of Southern whites. And I wanted this tree here in the nation's capital, on the Capitol grounds, because Emmett's brutal murder changed the course of this country's history. It changed me, a young black girl the same age as Emmett. I was happy that summer until word came up from Mississippi. And then I was frightened and enraged, and now I have a purpose that I want people to remember Emmett Till, and not only Emmett Till, but what happened to all of the Emmett Till. What happens to Emmett Till's of today to be remembered? And I wanted also to have it here in the shadow of the Capitol Dome because it is Emmett's and my ancestors as enslaved laborers that built that dome and built many of the buildings here in the nation's capital. We normally, when we honor our martyrs and our icons, we cast them in stone and marble. But for Emmett Till, I wanted a living memorial. I wanted a tree. And some might say, as an African American, a tree? Because the tree has a painful history for us. Some trees in this country in our dark past have borne strange fruit black men, women, and children hanging from trees. Not all of us were thrown in rivers, but I wanted a tree. And I want when generations come as this tree grows to pass by that tree and remember, not to forget, to remember and take action. And as this little tree sinks its, its roots deep into the soil, I want it to grow tall and wide as American sycamores do. And I want it to reach for the sun in the daytime and the stars in the night and inspire us to reach for our higher humanity and have this tree bear the fruit of equality and justice for all. And finally, Mr. Architect, I have to say how grateful I am that you picked an American sycamore tree. It is a beautiful tree. There's a larger one across the street. Um, it's so significant in that the leaves are deciduous, but so is the bark. If you look at that tree, the full-grown one, you'll see that the bark is multicolored, much like we Africans here in the diaspora. We are black, we are brown, we are beige, cream, and we change colors, but we grow tall and strong. I'm very proud of that, and it reminds me of a song in Pocahontas, if you have children, you probably know that song, Can You Paint With All the Colors of the Wind? The lyrics are, how high will a sycamore grow? If you cut it down, you'll never know. Emmett was cut down, and we'll never know how tall he would have grown. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.